Hey babes, Swatch and I are here to help you out with some general tips and tricks for sewing and really any kind of artistic endeavor. So here we go. Okay, so my number one piece of advice and pretty much the biggest um, fallout that I see people have when they're getting started is cheap materials will yield cheap results, no matter how much of a precise and perfect job you do sewing. It's one thing to have a budget when you're sewing, but it's not really ever a cheap hobby. Like even now, about half of the money that I bring in, it goes right back into materials and overhead. So you can set yourself a budget and save money for a project, but for every corner you cut, it's just one more thing that is going to yield a result you're unhappy with and cost you more money later when you want to do a better job. So spring for the good stuff and find out what the good stuff is. Number two, keep your space clean and organized. Uh, this might be just sort of heightened in my case because I actually do have OCD, but I find that if my environment is cluttered, my mind is cluttered. I, I can't concentrate if things are out of place around me. And I know that I'm kind of an extreme case of that, but whenever I'm cooking or sewing or really doing anything, I find that it really helps to, as I go through the process, like if I cut out, um, if I'm cutting out something to stop, put everything where it goes, throw away the garbage, not just like toss it on the floor and throw everything everywhere. Just, you know, have all your stuff laid out and prepared. And as you're going along your project, stop every once in a while to get your things in order and clear your head. Now, this is more of a piece of business advice um, than necessarily sewing, but take ownership, take responsibility. You're going to make mistakes and that's totally OK. Everybody makes mistakes and most people are going to understand that that's just going to happen at some point in your career or your process. And the number one thing isn't necessarily to do everything perfectly all the time. It's to communicate when you can't. Um, most of the I've never really had any nightmare clients or anything like that, but most of the problems that I've seen people have either as a client or as a corset maker is just down to poor communication. If you're having delays, send your client an update. If you're having a problem that you need to fix, just let them know. Just be transparent and honest. And if something goes wrong, take responsibility for it. Just say, hey, I screwed up. What can I do? to make this situation better, what can I do to repair things? And even though things may not have turned out totally perfectly, that client in the future isn't going to remember the mistake you made, they're going to remember how you handled it and they're gonna remember good customer service. I, probably my number one pet peeve <laughs> in any situation is poor customer service because I work in this job. I, it's not that hard to just be nice. Even when something's not your fault, it's not that hard to just talk to each other, you know? I, uh, I've, I've had very few bad experience with experiences with clients and it really just comes down to just being transparent and making yourself um, available as someone that they can trust. My next piece of advice is actually sort of applicable to any um, artistic endeavor or learning a skill set. It's Embrace the suck. You're going to suck. Just be prepared for that. It's okay. Every single person who's really, really, really good at something started out just stinking at it. Uh, my first corsets were plastic boned, cotton, just unrecognizable pieces of garbage. But you know what? At the time, I was so proud of it. I was like, look what I did. I made a thing. And I was so obsessed with that feeling of accomplishment and pride and ownership that I just kept, I just kept making stuff. And eventually, not all at once, but at some point, <laughs> I stopped sucking. I remember um, really just like four or five years ago, I was applying for a job at a bridal shop and uh, the owner wanted me to make something for her and bring it in and she would pay me for making that 
thing. And I wasn't, I was, I was okay. I was probably at a pretty moderate skill set. Maybe not um, qualified for the job necessarily, but um, I don't remember just being garbage and terrible, but I brought in the thing and there was, in the set of instructions she gave me, there was just this giant um, chunk of missing information. And when I brought in the thing, she begrudgingly handed me the paycheck and said, this isn't a flea market. And I didn't get the job. But really, I just, I chalked it up to, this is a nasty person. This isn't someone I want to surround myself anyway. It's not important to me to impress someone who would talk down to someone at a, at a less advanced skill level like that. You know, and when you are at a higher level, you should show a lot more kindness and respect and encouragement than that to people who who are still working on it, still getting there, because every single one of us were there at some point. And it just takes time. So be nice, be encouraging, be positive. And if you are a beginner, surround yourself with people who are supportive and network with other makers who are who are helpful because if we help each other and we teach each other it raises the bar for everybody and it makes us as a community better next just make a mock-up just do it i know it's a pain in the butt i know it feels like a waste of time it doesn't have to be nice i mean it's like look at this this is <laughs> this is garbage it really doesn't matter it's not fair to be pretty um don't try to save it, just, just do it. It's like laying out your sketch lines before you know you put in the pretty finished work on a drawing. If you really want to be happy with the end result and know this is gonna be perfect, you'll have wasted a lot more time having not done the mock-up, even if it just means that you have to make little tweaks. So make a mock-up. Next up, these things, you don't need them. You need a razor blade. Seriously, this is how the pros do it. I know it seems really scary to use a razor blade on fabric. I maybe avoid it for super delicate fabrics, but I really ripped so many more projects using those stupid seam rippers than I ever have a razor blade. And I've never cut myself on one. I'm pretty sure. You get cuts when you sew, it just happens. I'm always covered in injuries. But look at this, look at this. Oh my gosh. Oh, You don't have to slide it all the way down. You can just break up a couple of stitches. And there you go. So easy, so clean. It is gone. Now, if you really must use a seam ripper, don't rip necessarily because those things just cut up fabric everywhere i have to go retrieve it <laughs> now if you really must use a seam ripper or um you're nervous about damaging some fabric one thing you totally can do is you can just break some stitches on one side i usually had to use scissors because I, I threw the seam ripper into the abyss and i have no idea where it is now um but you break some stitches on one side and then on the other side, usually you can pull up the top thread and you can just slide it on out. And there you go. Or you can use your seam ripper and you can just slide that bat boy right on through the seam, just like I did with the razor blade. But it's so easy to, to miss or rip it. It's fine. Look, if you have like strong, thick fabric, ripping it is usually okay, especially if you break some stitches. Whew. So that's how I do. Next, and very import importantly, because this is one of my biggest pet peeves, press. Press your shit. Iron them seams. Do it. Even if like you're not making the most beautiful thing in the world, if you just press all the wrinkles out, make it nice, 
just kind of iron your seams before each step. It's going to look so much better. When I was in fashion school, nobody paid any attention to finishing. Like, people left wrinkly seams just unfinished, like, left pieces of thread hanging off of everything any everywhere. Take the time to clean things up and it'll look really nice. It makes a huge difference. And my number one piece of advice is be kind to yourself. Know when to walk away from a project. If you've been working for eight straight hours on something and just every time you sew a seam, you do something totally stupid that you know better than, like you sew it backwards or whatever. And just like things keep consistently just kind of going wrong for no reason. You keep having to backtrack. That's when you need to walk away because it's, it's only going to snowball from there. You're tired. You're frustrated. You're not in the right headspace. The, the, the juju is wrong. So just leave. Cuddle your dog. Make yourself a cup of tea. Have a nap. Get back to it tomorrow. You'll feel much better and you'll do a better job. Also, when you have a big crazy deadline or you're trying to get a whole bunch done at once, that's always when your machine breaks. Don't, don't anger the sewing machine gods. Don't bring their curse upon you. Just take care of yourself. Be kind to yourself. And if you screw up, <laughs> Forgive yourself. Be nice to yourself and take care of yourself. Don't forget to eat. <laughs> I always forget to eat. And uh, it makes me feel crappy and I do a crappy job. So. <laughs> I had to switch rodents because uh, Swatch went mad with power and pursued freedom. So um, Zipper is subbing in and going to join her. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> um, so I actually think that's it anyway. So happy sewing, babies. If you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to ask. If I don't answer, don't take it personally. I'm just really busy and there's some questions I get a lot of. But if there's something you want me to cover in a video, just let me know. I've got lots of ideas. <sighs> See you next time.